Hey, what's up everybody? BDF44 coming at you with another video. Do I look decent? I believe so. Hopefully so. This is what's on my mind. Fairweather stepchild. Stephen A. Smith said our franchise, the Los Angeles Lakers, are the fairweather stepchild of the Los Angeles Clippers. The LA Clippers who have never won a single championship. The LA Clippers do not have a single statue outside representing any of their players. Not a single retired name yet. Although I'm sure they're going to give Chris Paul his name up there and rightfully so. The point is... How is it possible to say that just because we've had some recent failures, not to mention that we've had a championship within the last three years, but to say that because we have had our recent failures, that we're the fair weather stepchild to a team that hasn't done anything there to themselves. Now, granted, they did get to the Western Conference Finals last year, where I thought they put up a valiant effort and didn't have any bad things to really say about the guys wearing the jersey. But don't be ridiculous as to say that we would be anything other than the dominant force in the league, let alone in this city, let alone over them. They who have nothing. Nothing. Are you kidding me? Stephen A. Smith, you've said a lot of egregious things. Very, very egregious things. I've heard worse, but this, this, this hit home. I'm a Laker fan. You know I'm not going for that. BDF44 is not going to sit here, hear that, and not turn on the camera. That's not how I operate. Genie, this is how they're talking about us. That's where my head goes next. This is how they're talking about us. We have got to do things correctly. You know, I, I think I think understanding that, first of all, having LeBron James as a part of this team right now is a good thing. That's a good thing. You adjust your thinking right away to understanding that going forward, while this kind of jargon is going on, you want him a part of this situation. So I'm, I'm, I've immediately shifted my thoughts to, they're going to keep him. We should keep him. Now, in my mind, Anthony Davis is the question mark. Obviously, I've been speaking on wanting to see the best Anthony Davis. I don't think we're going to trade him. And I'm inclined not to right now, honestly. I do like what we look like with him and LeBron James. If we can put the right requisite amount of pieces around them to keep our team deep enough for them to have plenty of rest and substitution ability for, for injury purposes. As long as we give ourselves enough Anthony Davis and LeBron James insurance, I think we'll feel confident that we can make the playoffs. And that's really our goal, honestly, because we don't have any picks. And we know if we give ourselves a playoff look, anything can happen once you get there. You know what I mean? So it's, it's all about just trying to fight your way toward maybe making the eighth seed or making the play-in tournament. That's our realistic goal. And, and the best way to do that is to not look at our two superstars as saying they can drag us there, but more so to give them as much help as humanly possible so that even if they are missing 20 games or 30 games, we're still within striking distance of that playing tournament. And that's the key. So the best way to do that is to just try to, 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 by all means and all accounts, shave off all cap space that, 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 is, that is condensed in, in, in one player. Any THT contract, Russell Westbrook's contract, you got to turn those into multiple players. That is the only way they're going to be able to compete. That's the only way we're going to make the playoffs. Russell Westbrook does not fit with these guys. So even if he were to have a fantastic season next year, his defensive liability issues and his shooting liability issues will leave us with some natural holes, natural holes with him at $47 million. That's just, you're going to have open holes all over your roster from night to night to night, no matter how hard you play. That's just understood. So you have to do that. You, have, you must do that. You cannot go into the season thinking that, you can compete with him at $47 million. You will not. You're setting LeBron James and Anthony Davis up for failure. You would do better, as I've heard others say, blowing the entire thing up, including trading LeBron James and getting him to a situation where he can compete for a championship because that's the right thing to do, right? So I'm just trying to, I'm trying to put us all in perspective to understand how to keep people from saying that we're going to be the stepchild of the Los Angeles Clippers going forward because if we do things wrong, we're going to be their stepchildren for a while. <clears throat> it ain't going to be just a joke or something that he's saying. It, it's going to be understood that we have been overtaken by a team that's going to have a better roster. And it ain't going to matter what happened in the past because it's going to be about how they market to that moment. And I'm telling you, we're not talking about next year. We're talking about two, three, four years down the road. So, yeah, the banners will still stand. But we need to retool and we need to, to get our, our, our entire 
cap situation in order. We we must do that. So, you know, that that's just what it is. When you look at how they're talking about the Lakers, maybe it doesn't matter because they're going to say something else tomorrow. <laughs> Once the game starts, they're going to be saying whatever the heck they got to say, but they're going to be talking about us regardless. But I think the bigger picture thing is you do have to compete with the Los Angeles Clippers. They do have their building opening up on this side of town very soon. And, you know, history has told us <laughs> That when new buildings open up, teams win championships. I'm looking at the Golden State Warriors. If they win this championship, their building has only been up open for a little while. And I'm thinking specifically in California. I'm looking at the L.A. Rams. <laughs> when they first year, they just won it. So I'm just saying, look, Los Angeles Lakers do have strong competition. They do. From just naturally understanding this situation, they do. You know, and even though this city, we're going to always follow the Lakers. It's going to be a new generation of kids that are going to need to see the Lakers be good in order to to believe in them the way that I grew up believing in them. And that's going to keep them sustainable. That's going to keep people believing in the team as lifelong fans like myself. Yeah, I'm going to raise my kids to be Laker fans. But if the team sucks, it's going to be hard to watch. Like, just period. So, yes, does this season matter? Of course. If we can capture a championship, it will be the only thing you know that that's all that, that ever matters but when you start thinking about how to how to keep the trajectory strong of the team while you figure out how to make yourself you know the best team you can be my thought is keep Braun in place and then do the best you can to bring him the best possible fit the easiest going seamless fit for his game and let the chips fall where they may he wants to play with Anthony Davis he believes in Anthony Davis so that's what we're doing. But me personally, I'm wondering about Anthony Davis. I have too many questions about Anthony Davis as to which I can trade Anthony Davis for things I don't have questions for. And that's what bothers me. That's what bothers me. Because I want to believe in Anthony Davis. As I put in the video yesterday, I want to believe in him. But the practical side of me likes to eliminate things that I'm not sure about for things that I am. And when it comes down to it, what I am sure about is the Lakers situation is bad. And... You know, it's hard to build a, a championship caliber team from year to year to year if you have bad contracts and contracts wrapped up in players that are not even going to be able to deliver at that level. And so if, if Anthony Davis can live up to his contract, which we expect him to if he's healthy, of course, then it's, um, it's a no-brainer. You know, you, you need him to build properly anyway. The type of player he is, you definitely want him down there. But the player he was last year, Nah, I can't do nothing with that player. I can't do nothing with that player at all. Because he's not available when I need him the most. And that's... When he was out there, he wasn't doing very much for us offensively. With the holes that we had, it just left us as a bad team. You know what I mean? So, hey man. You know, that's what it really comes down to. I, 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 I think the Lakers have a lot of options in terms of, of what they can do there. But building around LeBron James and making sure he has an awesome fit is probably the best way to assure you have a championship caliber opportunity within these circumstances. I don't know that riding it out with, with, with AD and Bron is the best way to do that. I don't know that. I really don't. And I'll tell you something else too. I, I don't think AD's a number two, man. That might be the problem, to be completely honest with you. That might be the problem. And I don't think too many people are thinking about that. But when you start wondering what motivates a guy, I think what... And it's not like I don't think he likes playing with Ron. I just think it makes it so that he has so much pressure off of him. He don't have to do certain things. And because of it, he's not playing up to a certain level. And I think because of that, it might be affecting his conditioning. It, you know, I'm just... I'm letting my mind fly. I don't know. It might just be the wedding cake weed, to be honest with you. But for real, when I think about this, I'm like, okay... What's what's the problem? Well, the problem is a lot of nights he's not even getting the ball as much, he, you know, because LeBron's controlling a lot of things, and then we work the ball around from there. He does so much for us defensively, so it's not allowing him to get in a rhythm shooting the ball. A lot of that is staying healthy, working from one injury to the next. All of that plays a part into everything, but I'm, ass I'm assuming he got a lot of rest this offseason. Now he's in, in the gym working out, and all that good stuff is great. So it's all about the conditioning he comes in with. But I have to trust that he's going to be able to make it through the season. That's my problem. If I'm thinking as a GM and as a, as a fan, <clears throat> I got to trust. 
that he's going to make it through the season that the history is telling me not. But what I know is I can get a lot for him. I know that. I know that, that there's still many GMs around this league who will take a flyer and give the farm up for Anthony Davis, who I still believe is an, a number one guy. I really do believe that when he's healthy. And if given the right pieces, definitely be on the championship team. It's already proven. So, you know, I like if I'm thinking outside the box, if I'm like a team like, let's see, who would, like maybe, I don't know, like Dallas or something like that. You know, I would love to slot Anthony Davis in with, with Luka Doncic or something like that. Or if I'm a team like, you know, just thinking out loud, of course, Chicago would love to bring him home. But like, you know, there are places you could slot him where the team is so good already to all they really need is his rim protection and his scoring, and they, they off to the races. That's the problem. Like, he has better fits around the league than whatever, you know, you know, depending on what we're being able to put together right now, right, based on the limited stuff that we can do for, for him, just like for LeBron. You know, the same goes for him, surrounding Anthony Davis with what he needs so that he can be at his best. So it's like, God, man, you have two A1s, and then you have a limited pie, Lakers. That's the problem. That's, that's just a bad position from which to work. And you got the THT contract. You got the circumstance with Austin Reeves that's kind of botched. So you know your negotiation with him is going to be on the horizon, as we talked about many times. You've got to make sure that you just, in my opinion, just kind of let something go. You know, something has to give. Something has to give. And, and what it looks like you're giving up is the future. And what that means is that the Clippers are just going to slip right in, <laughs> maybe even win a championship during that process, and and we're going to be the team that people look at and laugh at, you know? And so that is the problem. We're going to see a lot of young talent come into the league. Maybe we're able to acquire them, some of them, but will we ever be able to recapture that piece of the pie that we are missing, especially if LeBron James walks? See, right now, you can recapture, in theory, you trade those guys, even though that's not what you want to do. If you do that, you can get your full pie back and, and, and reverse all these issues. Now, you you know, even though you don't have your picks, you have somebody else's pick or you can trade picks or at least put together a championship team without picks through free agency or what have you. Everybody going to want to come to L.A., so it's not a problem. But as long as we are in a space where we don't have that cap space, where it's literally missing for which it is right now, um, building a championship team is just not realistic. You know, it's not realistic. And so that's the problem. That is the problem. We got to get that piece back. And the only way I see to do that is to trade Anthony Davis for picks, you know, and, and maybe some contracts that ultimately we can use. Players that are just going to be all right. Maybe on a guy or two on some bad contracts, some, you know, some contracts. And you, you just deal with them. You trade those contracts for little things, and you just build from there. And, yes, you're going to suck for about four years doing that. Yes. But if you don't go through that process now, maybe we have a couple all right years, and then we go through maybe five, six years of bad because you didn't start that process. So it's like, man, look, this, this can turn into a tumbling situation. And worst case scenario, you turn it to the next L.A. Clippers. <laughs> you turn it in, basically. One mistake begets the next mistake. You try to make up for that mistake and you take another chance. You try to another superstar. It's just like, golly, man, you just keep putting yourself in more and more holes. The best way to get out of this is to just hit the reset button. Like the Portland Trailblazers just did, as I said a million times, it's the safest way to play it. And just suck for the next three years while you try to accumulate the picks. By the time you get to 2027, you would have a couple pieces that you found that are pretty good along with guys that are just going to come here over, over the course of the years free agency. Will you be a champion? No, I don't believe it's going to be possible for us to build a real championship team unless we get absolutely lucky. But we'll be on a path to then build one from there. That's what it's about. You can start, you can start building one from there. And that is, that's where I see us going. And building one from there is a quick thing. That's a quick thing. From there, it's like, okay, now we get the best players available. That free agency, that year, 2027 or 2026, whatever year that's going to be, LA is the spot to come to. Everybody starts dreaming about that now. Believe it or not. 
that's how that works. So it's not about whether or not you're going to be able to get those guys. You, you put the word out that you're going to have your crap fixed by then so they can start dreaming about how L.A. real estate's going to be in 2027. See, this is how you think if you're the Lakers. But if you do it the wrong way, mortgage all of that, right, for today, because you got Braun today and you know he's one of the greatest players to ever play the game, and none of those guys are going to be him, you already feel like, well, we're already halfway at the finish line, which is why I said what I said at the beginning of the video. You keep him now. But I don't know that stands for AD. I don't know that stands for AD. I like AD, and I know Bron's on board with AD, so you don't want to piss Bron off. But I don't, I don't think I can build the team that I need around those two to make this this risk actually worth it. That's the problem. If I'm gonna do this little short-term risk, knowing that I'm gonna suck later on, we gotta make ourselves a champion-level team. We can't just get make the playing tournament in this particular situation. How, how does that, you know, after everything I just said and the only thing we come come about is making the playing tournament for the third straight year? No, man. No. I can I can lose like that and have it for, be for a purpose. You feel me? So that is what I'm thinking. I don't have the numbers in my head in terms of how much money is going to be for Genie and all that. I don't know. But you know, that's not my, my, my spirit of expertise. But what I can say is looking outward. You start talking about the years you're going to have to make money after LeBron leaves. Those are the years you're trying to make sure they're okay years. That's the years I'm thinking about. So, hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. Nothing easy about running the franchise, especially when mistakes have already been made. Now you just got to fix them. Um, and you got a lot of pressure because the guys you have here are looking to win right away, which is why I think the easiest thing to do is to give them to someone who can actually give them what it is that they're looking for. Truly. Truly that. You know what I mean? It's just like I said about the, 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 the player that takes on too much of the cap and then can't represent what he can do, right, for the team. Same goes for the team. They can't do what it needs to do for the player. Same thing. I hate to say it. My name is BDL44. I thank you all for watching. I'm out. Oh, and one more thing. Stephen A. Smith, we ain't nobody's stepchild, bro. Stop that. Stop that nonsense. Because fans like myself are going to make sure it doesn't happen. Peace.